hi and welcome to scott's inverts i'm scott these are the inverts today we are doing rehouse of our carabiner versa cola it was kind of an emergency housing situation when we first got her she is apparently gravid we've got her from creatures from the north so let's check out the setup we'll give you a bit of care in this video as well but she is absolutely stunning we have an exo terra 30 by 30 by 45 tall some pot and compost mixed with a bit of coir in the bottom there. Just not nice and damp, not overly damp. Um, we don't have to drench the soil with this species at all. That cork there is actually a cork panel, quarter of an inch thick, cut it to size. I actually burnt it with a uh, blowtorch to give it that brown, dark brown colour. Left it for about six months before being able to use it because of the smell. Dry moss, just shaking off the dust in the hope that the dust will then create more moss growth in the soil itself um, just a little experiment i'm kind of playing with with this enclosure i suppose we'll find out more with that in about six months time then just mix that straight into the substrate get it nice and damp get those bits of moss that we've just put in there underneath the first substrate layer and again in the hope that it starts to grow now this piece that I'm putting in now is actually a fish tank ornament. Um, I have got another one of these and I've used it in an enclosure before with a Vitata and they work really, really well. It's basically just like a piece of cork bark with a bit more room at the bottom and it's designed to go into the corner of a fish tank. But I thought, do you know what? That's going to look absolutely beautiful in an enclosure again. And it just makes a big change from keep using cork bark all the time. Now we're going to fill the floor of this enclosure with moss. This moss is sphagnum moss, which I've pre-soaked for several hours before putting into the enclosure here. I'm just going to cover the whole floor with this. And again, this is all to aid with humidity. Again, to create like a forest floor environment. So if our spider goes down onto the floor, it feels a bit more at home. A bit more how it would feel like over in the Caribbean. The Carabina versicola is from Martinique, so it's also called the Antilles Pink Toe, Martinique Pink Toe, and the Martinique Red Tree Spider. They can grow up to around 15 centimeters, they're a new world of boreal. They seem to be really, really docile, a very, very friendly spider. The growth rate is medium, so don't, um, don't expect your spider to be growing as fast as an LP. But it's certainly not going to be growing as slow as a Gramistolia. Now this skull, we found this up in Scotland, so right up at the north of the UK. And I've had it for several months and been trying to wonder what I could do with it in an enclosure. Now this species doesn't burrow, so I thought it'd be great for ground coverage, for anchor points. And we all know how much the... Carabina versicola actually webs up so I thought this skull with a ton of webbing all over it is going to look pretty damn epic. The females of this species will grow to around 15 centimeters, the males around 13, the males live between two to three years, they reach maturity around 18 months. The females they can live up to a whopping 15 years and can reach maturity around five years of age. So when we think about the Caribbean, think about all that moisture that's coming across, the ventilation with the winds that we get and the climate. So Caribbean temperatures, 28 degrees in the summer where we find this species and 24 in the winter with humidity around 70 to 80 percent. And we're all good to go. Remember when you're doing a setup, if you've got little bits of pieces like those pieces of timber that I've just put in the back and that little piece of cork covered in moss at the front just keep moving them around until you're happy where they are um, it's all about webbing points for this species the Caribbean versicola as I said earlier really 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 does web exceptionally well try and make a little bit of room now for a water dish so the, these guys like a little bit of humidity but again we don't want to drench that soil so a large water dish We'll keep that humidity up where we want it without having to overly drench the substrate, increasing the chances of us getting mould. But when you look into this enclosure, that water dish looks a little bit ugly, in my opinion. So, what I thought we'd do is get the glue gun, glue gun some moss straight to the front of this water dish, just to try and 
blend it in. I mean, there's not much you can do when you put a plastic dish like that in, into into an enclosure. There's not a lot you can do to try and hide it really well. But now the enclosure really has taken shape. I'm, I'm pretty pretty chuffed where we are, but we can still see a great big whacking hole where the water dish is. So I oh, found a fake flower. So this one's never going to rot or anything like that. So I just put it straight in there next to the skull. I thought it looked pretty cool there, actually. It kind of draws your eye away from that plastic water dish in the hopes it kind of makes it disappear a little bit. I'm going to add a second water dish. Um, we've glue gun this one, put a bit of glue gun on the back of it. I'm just going to put that up a bit higher. So then it gives the spider a choice of water up high or water down below, wherever it wants to go. Bit absolutely awesome. A few little finishing touches and we're almost there. Now the moss is already wet and so is the substrate. So I'm just going to give the top section a very light spray now. And then what I'm going to do then is just spray down the enclosure once a week. This female is gravid so I don't want to keep her too wet. I want to try and increase the chances of her dropping that egg sac sooner rather than later. So again just a nice... Nice gentle mist in across the enclosure is absolutely spot on. And we also need to top up that water dish. So what I'm doing here is topping up the water dish, letting it overspill a little bit as well. So we've got more of a damp area around that water dish. Um, a little bit like in the, in the wild where they get the pools and the ponds and then the substrate around that little pool would be damper than the rest of the area. And that is our enclosure, all good to go. Now this is what we had her in. We had to kind of do a quick rehouse into this for when we got her, because I didn't know I was actually buying this, this species. And when we take the lid off, you'll see all the webbing. And the reason I need to change her from here is there's only one way into this enclosure, and that's at the top there. And every time I do it, I destroy her web. And what I want to be able to do is open the door and access the very front of her webbing Whereas taking it off the top, we literally just, it's like taking the roof off your house. She is feeling really insecure every time I do that. So hopefully if I haven't got to do that in the future, feeling response will increase. Now I don't handle my spiders, he says, but this one I've took the opportunity because they're absolutely gorgeous and they're very, very docile. It's probably one of the best spiders that you can possibly think of. Um, but they can jump and they can be bolty as well. So... Just if you're going to do anything like this, please be mindful of that. Absolutely beautiful, isn't she?
so that was the rehouse of our adult female carabiner versicola um since kind of setting her up i've put a heat mat on the side of that vivarium um on a stat so to keep that temperature kind of up around 30 32 degrees in the hope that she'll actually drop a sack and we'll have some babies right here at scott's inverts if you're not subscribed remember to hit that subscription button drop a like drop a comment and do all the good stuff and as always guys we shall see you again on the next one